super laptop setup. Powered by probably MSI's craziest laptop yet, the Creator Z16 together with their modern MD24-1 monitor which I'll be giving away. I edited most of this video on this setup and of course I am impressed. After browsing the subreddits and realizing people had a lot of questions regarding this device, I decided to really push this thing and create a whole environment for it to properly test it and see what it is capable of. And so in this video, I'll be going over this device, the performance it yields with this 65 watt RTX 3060 across multiple professional tools and why MSI's latest business and productivity monitor is one to include within your own desk setup. Stay tuned until the end for the giveaway. Now this here has an absolute beautiful screen and I'm just so glad to see MSI jumping on the 16 inch form factor now too, which in my opinion it's the sweet spot for a powerhouse device. Overall, this Quad HD display at 120Hz has a total of 2560 by 1600 pixels which means it yields a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. With this build, we are getting a touchscreen that is very color accurate, has great peak brightness, although no HDR. And I mean just look at this thing, with 99% DCI-P3 color gamut, color grading this very video you are watching was actually enjoyable. However, the panel on this display can be extremely glossy and it only gets better when working with white backgrounds. I actually moved around the house in order to test the glossiness within different environments and although some are better than others, it is not that big of a deal most of the time. However, it can get quite annoying at times but not to the point that it is unusable. And as requested on Reddit, here is the backlight bleed test at full brightness on this particular screen. Surprisingly though, I honestly don't mind the chunky bezels on this display. I must say, it does feel sturdy and it passes the wobble test when typing on this mini LED backlit keyboard. Yeah, a mini LED backlit keyboard powered by Steel Series. It's actually quite awesome to see, and even better, quite awesome to modify with the Steel Series GG software. The key size reminds me a lot of the MacBook Pro 16 inch, and they feel a lot like some of the Asus keyboards I've tried in the past, which I personally really really enjoy. Great job MSI. In my book, having full-sized arrow keys and keeping it simple when it comes to the function keys is what I would want, although I'm not quite sure why I would want to use the flip screen button. But I like locking the trackpad, disabling the webcam, and sure enough handling the brightness on this display. Now, beneath this whole layout, we've got a trackpad with Windows Precision. There's nothing special about it, feels like a regular trackpad. It is accurate and I never experienced any cursor jumps. However, I I did notice that the trackpad click does feel lighter as you go down its frame and it goes a bit too deep for my liking. I sure would have loved to see a more quality trackpad on this system, especially at the prices these type of laptops go for. Also, I often feel like I'm running out of room to do simple things like for example, drag and drop into a bin. Which leaves me wishing we could shrink this exhaust fan in order to make room for a bigger trackpad like on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Yes, I know what you're thinking, you thought this was the speaker grill. As much as I hated this at first, I'm quite glad this is here. Temperatures are actually quite high as you'll see later on this video when stress testing this on 3D Mark, which means that the speakers were placed at the bottom and full transparency here, I love these speakers. They sound absolutely great as they are punchier, have great bass to them and produce absolutely no distortion. <laughs> Huge plus MSI mostly because the Nahemic experience seems to be more stable, but I do have to comment on the 720p webcam. I've seen better and I've seen worse, so I would say that this sits right in the middle as well as the integrated mic within this device. This is something I truly didn't bother using much with a laptop like this. All of this though does sit in this lunar grey aluminum chassis. It has a beautiful laser edge MSI logo on the front panel and at the bottom another exhaust grill with these nice little rubber feet. Very sturdy laptop at 4.85 pounds, just about 0.55 pounds more than the 16 inch MacBook Pro. The only thing I wish they took away from it, it's the biometrics. I wish it would be implemented on the power button like the Dell XPS. Now in terms of IOs, there are plenty. We've got this regular DC input to charge its 90 watt hour battery, 
Also, a couple of USB Type A ports at 10 gigabits per second, your standard audio jack, along with a micro SD card reader, which I did wish throughout the whole week that it was a full size SD card reader instead. But at last, we've got a couple of Thunderbolt 4 ports, which are awesome, although my gank chargers don't seem to work with it. Quite odd, which is why I hope this is a unit fault. But if you wish to do so, Thunderbolt 4 will allow you to connect up to two 4K displays with this unit as well. If you are on a budget at this point, I think your best bet would be to pair it up with the MSI's MD24 1PW monitor, mainly because it has a built-in USB-C port which I have been using to connect the Z16 on. For 249 Canadian dollars in this current market, it is almost impossible to find a Type-C monitor at this price. It did come with a stand which you can comfortably adjust at whatever height and angle you want, but because I enjoy minimalism, I decided to mount this thanks to its best amount and the stand of screws MSI provided with it. With a 23.8 inch panel and a 1080p resolution, I did find it perfect to pair it up with the Z16 to make this video. The quality of the display is nothing impressive like the Z16, but I like the fact MSI took into consideration adding less blue light on this budget unit. It made it a lot better for me when working and when I was editing this video. Regardless, it does have an IPS panel with a matte coat on it and display kit support, which is really cool since I was able to use their software to do things like split my windows in an orderly manner, tweak some display settings and go as far as tweaking the color settings. Although the software has some bugs, I don't recommend it, but natively in their OSD, you can tweak the brightness, contrast, color temperature, as well as adjust the volume if you plan on using these single watt speakers. With these, you can always allow yourself to avoid getting your own unit, although I did not find myself using them. Just don't expect too much from these little guys. Even though this is a productivity monitor, it still delivers the standard 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which I honestly don't mind at all because like I said in my last review, I haven't truly been noticing whether or not my productivity has gone up with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio instead. That being said, this is by no means a gaming monitor. It only has 250 nits of brightness, which I find quite low at times. If you are in a dark room, then you will be fine, but 250 50 nits is about half to a little less than what most smartphones brightness deliver. With a refresh rate of 75 hertz and a 5 millisecond response time, you do truly feel the difference from a 60 hertz monitor, but again, this is just the most basic specs to get you working. However, I do admire it has an anti-glare surface treatment, so it gave me a bit of a break from the glossy display the Z16 has. And the backlit bleed test, well, it surely passed for a budget monitor, but note that there is mostly some bleed towards the corners. Also, don't forget that if you currently don't own a machine that supports Thunderbolt, you can always use their HDMI port, which by the way is not 2.0, Rather, it is an HDMI 1.4. Regardless of their bandwidth, you can always go ahead and rock your console if you wish to do so. But the biggest takeaway with this 23.8 inch monitor is the fact that USB-C is now accessible at such a low price. I do have to point out that my only complaint with this monitor is that it only seems to be charging MacBook devices and not Windows laptops. So I hope MSI can address this issue soon enough. All of this is contained in this nice white matte color with the majority of the white being in the back and a nice and grief MSI logo on top. But don't worry because you can always get this one in black as well. I love the fact the bezels are super small which makes it seem like it is bezel-less. I love the one and a half centimeter chin at the bottom of the display. An overall super lightweight monitor at 10 pounds without the stand and 14 pounds with it. Great job MSI at keeping this one thin. As a student, it is an awesome monitor to have which is why I will be giving this unit away. You can either use it with a stand to swivel it and support your code or simply mount it and keep a minimal aesthetic to browse the web and get your homework done. But before we get into the giveaway, let's take a look at how this 65 watt RTX 3060 performed within this laptop test setup. In games such as Call of Duty Cold War, GTA 5 and Apex Legends, things were actually not so bad in terms of FPS when gaming at native QHD resolutions. For comparison, my Razer laptop which has an 85 watt 3060 yields a total FPS of 42 in Cold War, 32 in GTA and 45 while playing Apex Legends. But the MSI Z16 on the other hand yields FPSs of 45 for Cold War, 30 for GTA 5, 
and 55 for Apex Legends without having any of these frames drop after a long period of gaming time. We did have a special request to test Skyrim so I went ahead and I bought it. Skyrim at max graphics and native QHD resolution ran quite well, with an average frames per second of 58 and provided the laptop was plugged in during any of these gaming tests. Not much of a difference in between both of these although the i9 within this particular model does help a lot in terms of FPS. And if you are looking to game on a monitor, particularly a 1080p one, frame rates across these games don't budge at all. Just know that this wasn't meant to be a gaming or a workstation laptop, but because I really wanted to push this device, I decided it was best to take a look at how it would treat a CAD software such as SolidWorks. When it came to load composite files with multiple parts within them, it was super quick. Within, I was able to open up individual parts and even tweak them completely, which did show the changes instantaneously. Even though this is no quadro card, I was able to create an animation and explode my door with all the little tiny parts that it contained. It was quite impressive how it was able to handle this. Overall, it really had no problem navigating the whole assembly. As for editing this video using Premiere Pro, things ran completely smooth. It does exactly what this laptop is intended for, creating. Color grading my footage that actually comes from my Sony Alpha Mark 7 S III was enjoyable, scrolling through the timeline and playback in full resolution mode was smooth, and frames that were quite intense like the ones you saw within this video never struggled during playback. Even adding motion graphics within my project file and running it without rendering seemed to perform better than my Razer Blade 15. Although most of these things are handled by Nvidia's GPU acceleration, we cannot forget that having 64GB of RAM in contrast to 16 does help quite a bit. Surprisingly, the 65W GPU within the system was able to keep up with this project and my files codec. Even though this monitor isn't what I wanted to use for color grading, I mainly used it to have a clear overview of the timeline and easily manage all my layers in terms of sound and video. So this 65W laptop RTX well, it really didn't show any lack of power for video editing, which of course pushed me to use the micro SD card slot to import and edit the assets for this video on Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom. Again, slapping my own preset on Lightroom and tweaking some settings to make my pictures desirable was no problem, and if they needed to be modified on Photoshop to remove unwanted objects or even duplicate a few details, the process was just flawless. I even want to point out that the brush tool within Lightroom did not feel laggy or heavy at all. However, I don't think this was enough to truly test this GPU, as 65 watt is very close to the weakest an RTX 3060 can be since they typically range from 65 watt to 115 watts. So to have proper testing, I disconnected the laptop from the monitor and ran some requested benchmarks using 3D Mark Firestrike and Time Spy while the laptop was plugged in in best performance mode. TimeSpy is a DX12 benchmark whose tests are rendered at 2560x1440p p resolution, with a total score of 6338 for this laptop configuration. Surprisingly, it left this laptop between the average gaming laptop and the average gaming PC. Also, with Firestrike at 1080p, which is a very demanding DX11 benchmark for GPUs, without overclocking the system, a total score of 14610 was obtained, which leaves again the Z16 sitting within the same range of results. Not bad at all for a 65 watt RTX 3060 and a laptop that is apparently not meant for gaming. I do want to point out that while running these tests, the fans do generate their highest decibels. and the temperature of the device does hit peak temperatures of 50 degrees, which can be 1 to 2 degrees cooler than the Razer Blade 15. This heat does dissipate at times towards the keyboard, which can make it a bit uncomfortable at times. Equally, it can get uncomfortable if you push this device while working on your lap. But if you are simply browsing the net and doing day-to-day -day tasks, it will not bother you at all. You can always just use their MSI center to cool things down, adjust the fans the way you want them, or really just full blast the whole device. It works quite well. I'm just sort of glad MSI seems to be taking advantage of their components and avoiding thermal throttling. Another benchmark I also wanted to run was the SSD read and write scores, mainly because I noticed the reading footage was extremely fast on this laptop. And indeed, I was right. 
with scores of 6,158 megabytes per second for read and 4,807 megabytes per second for write, this machine has a great internal storage unit for any type of work. The only downside to this is that if you ever want to upgrade the RAM or the SSD, you need to flip the motherboard to install the sticks. That I am not a fan at all. As for the battery life, even though we have a 90 watt hour battery in here, a single charge lasted for about an hour and a half while I was transferring footage organizing into the timeline and even color grading a few things here and there, provided I was on best performance of course and YouTube was running in the background. Otherwise, for casual use, expect about 5-6 to six hours in total, and if you plan to connect it to a monitor, those hours did drop for me which yield 4-5 to five hours of casual use. I did run a deferred procedure call latency test as requested, and after running it for about 10 minutes, we had constant results of 1219 microseconds provided I had Netflix and YouTube running in the background. As for whether or not the Thunderbolt port bandwidth was shared between the USB-A ports, I just couldn't tell hell. It does seem like the bandwidth between the Thunderbolt ports are shared among them, the same goes with the USB-A ports, but whether or not both connections share resources, sadly, after digging into the device manager, I couldn't find a proper answer. All I know is that all of their controllers are indeed connected to one single bus, and transferring heavy footage within Thunderbolt from my SSD is actually really quick. This looks to be the best built MSI laptop yet and I strongly consider it if you are a content creator. Not only that, but after benchmarking it and playing some games, this is definitely suited for mid-end graphic games. I also want to mention that by buying this laptop you can easily redeem their free Alessi corkscrew, which is this little awesome guide you can use to remove a cork. Just don't forget to visit msi.com and redeem it before September 30th. Next week, we've got a very exciting monitor review. I've been meaning to bring into the channel. I cannot wait to game on this, but for now, I need to unbox it and set it all up. I hope this review answered all of your questions and I hope to see you all soon. Take care. If you actually made it this far into the video and watched the whole review, thank you so much. To enter the giveaway, leave a comment on this video regarding what you need this monitor and go to my latest post on Instagram where you need to tag two of your friends. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel, you are following me on Instagram as well as MSI Canada. I wish you all the best, good luck.